Zidane's been linked with everybody, but he's not going to United, or Juventus, or Chelsea. None of them. After leaving Real Madrid just 10 months ago, he's re-signed with Los Blancos. Hey, I'm Adrian from Rabona TV, and my initial thought on the situation, the reality that I thought we were going to be living in, was that, okay, Real Madrid looks like they won't be winning a single cup this season, out of the Champions League, out of the Copa del Rey, and would need quite the collapse from both Atletico Madrid and Barcelona for them to have a chance at winning La Liga. So, at this point, there's not much that a second managerial change can do for Real Madrid this season, at least at a winning competitions level, a sporting level. Now, the rumors were swirling that Mourinho would be returning to Madrid, and Mourinho himself never distanced himself from the rumors. Whenever he was asked about them, he would say something along the lines of, there's nothing concrete right now, when I know something, I will let you know. Former Real Madrid president Ramon Calderón even told BN Sports on Saturday, March 9th, that Mourinho could be unveiled as the new manager at Real Madrid as early as Monday. There were rumors swirling that Florentino Perez was flying to London to meet with Pochettino and Mourinho. Pochettino said on Saturday that he will, of course, return to Spain someday, etc, etc. Those two seemed like the front runners for the job. Then on Monday morning, I wake up to Guillaume Balague claiming that Zidane will in fact take over at Real Madrid, and my first thought is, okay, makes sense, I guess. Get someone to get the dressing room back in order, someone who the players are familiar with and trust, and finish the season in good spirits and hopefully with some decent results to give the permanent manager a more smooth entry <laughs> than Lopetegui had. But I guess that doesn't make a whole lot of sense either. From a sporting point of view, sacking Solari doesn't make a ton of sense because it's not as if Madrid are capable of winning anything as of now. Yes, they're still mathematically in with a shot of winning La Liga, but only mathematically. Madrid then released a press statement saying that Zidane is hired until 2022, and my first reaction was that I was... Well, I was a little bit puzzled. After the way in which he left 10 months earlier, and then the situation that Real Madrid find themselves in, now, without a shot at a single trophy, from a sporting point of view, I just didn't see the point of one sacking Solari, who was dropped into a pretty difficult scenario, it's not really his fault, I don't think many blame him, and two, I didn't foresee Zidane coming back permanently so soon after he said he had to leave Real Madrid for the good of the club. In the press conference that followed, he reiterated that point, saying, quote, I left Real Madrid because I needed to. The squad needed it too. I came back because the president called me back and I care about him and the club. For Madrid, this signing makes sense. A manager that won nine trophies in about two and a half seasons. Absolutely ridiculous haul, likely impossible to replicate. Now as far as Zidane goes, now that we've heard from him and had some time to consider things, I think it was a good move for him as well. If not, a little bit weird. Why was it a good move by him? Well, he was able to let someone else take the brunt of what was destined to be a very tough transitional season for Madrid after they had a few seasons of winning every single trophy that they could. Remember, Madrid didn't win the Copa del Rey in his final season, and despite winning the Champions League, that trophy largely papered over the massive, massive crack that separated them from their rivals Barcelona in the standings. A full 17 points. He saw the direction they were moving in, he knew that it would be close to impossible to win anything in the next season, and so he bounced. He was 100% right to feel that way. Ten months later, he gets to come in as the savior once again without sullying his reputation, plus he now has leverage that perhaps he wouldn't have had last summer. He can now point to the weak points in the squad and he can make demands. If he had stuck around, why would Florentino spend money on something that didn't need fixing, so to speak? Madrid, for the last few transfer windows, were already at a point where they were investing very little, in comparison to their previous investments, of course. Bringing in players like Ceballos, Odriozola, Zola, Teo Hernandez, not anywhere near Galacticos. The reason being, because they were winning Champions League titles without having to spend. In fact, their last big name signing that was anything close to a Galactico was James Rodriguez in the summer of 2014. That's five years ago now. Almost. And speaking of which, that had to be a big part of what swayed Zidane to sign back on with Real Madrid. There's absolutely no way he would have agreed to come back if he wasn't given some sort of guarantees as far as the exact players he wanted to bring in, or at least the amount of funds he would be granted this summer in order to improve the team. Does this mean that the Neymar deal will start to click into gear, or the ongoing drawn out Eden Hazard romance? Remember, Courtois said that wherever he goes, Hazard must follow. 
And Hazard said he already knows where he's going next summer. It would be responsible to get a decent midfielder as well, perhaps a striker since Mariano is on the missing persons list. It could also be a responsible move to grab a fullback, etc, etc. I expect an old-fashioned transfer window from Real Madrid this summer with some big, big signings. And still, from a sporting point of view, I don't think that this does anything for Madrid, but from a morale point of view, for the final 11 matches that Real Madrid will play this season, Zinedine Zidane can build some morale and momentum going into the summer, not only for the fans, but for the players as well, as there's clearly some self-doubt that is racking this team. These final 11 matches, this final two-ish months that remain for Real Madrid will be crucial for Zidane to analyze the squad and judge who is and who isn't worthy of staying. Big decisions will need to be made about the likes of Gareth Bale, who is consistently linked with moves away and looks genuinely unhappy, yet his agent does say that he will stay at Real Madrid, probably because of his massive wage bill that no one wants to pay. There's of course the Marcelo situation in which he has been completely usurped by Sergio Reguillon, and rightfully so, as the young Spaniard has been incredible for Real, while Marcelo has looked a shadow of himself for much of this season. And maybe most notably, in my opinion, Isco. Remember him? He's gone missing. He has featured for a grand total of 41 minutes in his last four appearances for Real Madrid. And this was a guy who was so important to Zidane's success in the Champions League last season. Interested to see if he'll get more minutes now that Zidane is back? My money's on a defiant yes. So, a shorter one today, wanted to give you guys my snap reaction to all of this. Overall, I think that Zidane is the big winner here. Well, of course, the club will be a big winner as well, so long as Zidane brings them some glory next season, that's a given. But his reputation took absolutely zero damage while he was gone, while well, Madrid's took a ton, while Perez, who already has a bit of a strange relationship with the Real Madrid faithful, looks a bit arrogant in thinking that he could lose both the Zidane and Ronaldo, add some uninspiring reinforcements in the likes of Mariano and Courtois when you already have Kaylor Navas there, and still think everything would be okay. Now it's time for him to put his money where his mouth is, and if you want to believe Miguel Delaney, then he'll be putting up around 300 million pounds for Zidane to work with. Isn't it crazy how 300 million doesn't even seem like that much anymore? Like, of course, it's a ton of money, but to buy someone like Hazard or Neymar, or Mbappe just committed to PSG, but maybe now he'd be interested in going and playing under Zidane at Real Madrid. Any of those elite players, when Real definitely is further away from being fixed than just one major signing, it's gonna, I feel like it's gonna cost more than 300 million. I don't know, we'll see. 300 million still is a lot. Anyways, sorry, I'm done for real now. Thanks for watching. Make sure you drop your opinion in the comments below. I'm Adrian, this is Rabona TV, and I shall see you guys tomorrow for another watch along. Later. Oh, and subscribe if you're new, man. Come on.